Hey, this is Bryce Johnson from Expedition Bigfoot. You're listening to the Paranomaly Zone. Look, I know the supernatural is something that isn't supposed to happen. It does happen. A ghostly apparition in the dark of night. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, that's hysteria! So, Mike, about... Four seconds ago, you said, yep, I'm good, and I will follow your lead. Now, yes, I did. It made me wonder, you know, going on about 12 seconds ago now, what would happen if we started an episode where I didn't say a damn thing? Well, I would have to fill in, I guess, a little bit. So, okay, well, right. <laughs> I would hope that you would. <laughs> yeah. So you think, um, I mean, I know my opinion on this. I, I know my thoughts. Do you think you would succeed as the uh, show introduction man? Or is it something that you, in other words, should I, should I, should I put you to the test? No. Out of the, oh, okay. I'm starting to think, boy, he's talking about doing this crap. You're going to do this to me, aren't you? <laughs> so you're saying if I if I sprung that on you out of nowhere, you, uh, well, I'm not going to say you would panic, but you would look at me blankly and, and go like, are we, are we on? Uh, is, is, this, is this going? Or would you get angry? How do you think you would react? Hmm. I have no idea. Okay. I mean, that's that's a good question. I have, I really have no idea. I think we should put it to the test. Mm, no, no, <laughs> no. You know, it's something that okay, yeah, I would do that if I had to, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But there's always that caveat that you say afterwards that, but I really don't want to. <sighs> but if I had to, <laughs> yes, I mean, I think you would do just fine. I think um, you would probably surprise yourself with your capabilities and you would say, hey, that's not that difficult at all. And you'd probably run away at the show and you'd end up kicking me off and to, uh, to, the, to the joy and happiness of all eight of our listeners. Would saying, I have to use my radio voice? Um, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. No, that's a no. flat out no right there. Okay. So, uh, no, just your, your casual uh, your casual carbono voice is good enough for our listeners. Okay. So. <clears throat> I was just asking, so maybe next time I'll throw that out on you. And <laughs> well, and then you, you run do, with it. You, you know, you might be surprised what I do. I have, you know, I might just shut my laptop, <laughs> and you'd be gone. I'd be I would, gone exactly. And I just go to bed. <laughs> I'd just be done. You know, that would be a first for a <laughs> podcast. That could that could be a, maybe that's a new venture. Maybe that could be a, a future Patreon exclusive episode where it's this, yeah. uh, it's this audio of Mike sleeping. Um, yeah. I'm going to well, warn, absolutely. I'm going to warn uh, new listeners because from time to time, uh, uh, occasion to occasion, we do get new listeners to the Paranomaly Zone. Um, you do not want to listen to Mr. Mike sleep because I was in, well, <laughs> <sighs> See, Mike's already laughing. We were in said haunted Sally House, allegedly haunted Sally the, House. The Sally House. And boy, oh boy, when it came to Betty by time, no luck for me because Mike was zonked out on that ultra comfortable uh, couch that was there. <laughs> and, it was uh, comfy. I sunk right into it. I like. I became part of that couch. I know you did. <laughs> Trust me. I know you did. I don't think I moved all night. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I was laying on the floor, fearing those those mice that were inhabiting the chair that I thought were they were actually inside yeah. of that freaking chair. I was so yeah, stupid. that you were gonna sleep in that chair. Yeah. So, anyways, ah, oh, um, it's hilarious. Yeah, future Patreon exclusive episode coming up, boys and girls. Mike Carbno sleeping, maybe. 
even on video. So we shall see how that huh. goes. So, Mike, how are you doing, by the way? It's good to see you. Uh, yeah, right. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Good, 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 good. In case you are new to the program, this is the Paranomaly Zone. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is your weekly dose of all things. Hey, you may or may not have guessed it. All things paranormal, strange, and mysterious. My name is Patrick Koffenberg, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host with the ghosts, the paranormal poster boy himself, ghost daddy himself, Mr. Mike Carbno. Now, Mike, ghost daddy popped into my brain before we started recording. Hmm. And you want to know why? Yes, I'm very much intrigued why. Because I was envisioning, call me cuckoo, call me <laughs> strange. Call you cuckoo, Fran and Ollie. Uh, that too. Oh, but it's I was, kukla. I was in, imagining <clears throat> yes. in my mind, you know, you have had a lifelong experience with the paranormal. Um, seeing a ghost is like nothing to you. It's like it's like waking up in the morning, rolling over, and seeing Mary next to you. That's the same equivalent as seeing a ghost. It's so casual. And casual, just, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was envisioning you, the next time or every time you see a ghost, you say, Who's your daddy? Who is your daddy? So you are therefore <laughs> the ghost <laughs> Daddy, oh, um, would you consider doing that the next time you you encounter the paranormal? Will you will you just like knock <laughs> knock them down well, a peg? After that long ass story for that lame ending. <laughs> what are you talking about, lame ending? Yeah, I would do that. I will do that for you, and I will, you know, just for me. And you know what? Yeah. That will work out because you can talk about being the anointed ghost daddy when I put you on the spot. And I go silent during the introduction of next episode. You can talk about what it's like being a ghost daddy. How's that sound? Hmm. Thanks for your feedback. That was great. Yeah, I'm I'm not just not sure about that. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. You wouldn't be very good at presidential debates. I'll tell <laughs> 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 you. You think my question was rambling and long? <clears throat> Wait until they're asking about the economy and you know all sorts of wonderful things that affect all of us. I don't watch the debates. And they will actually. ask Mike and they say, to you, you, Mr. Carbno, you take it. And you go, hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, uh, oh, well. Ah, oh, damn it. I should have had that sound bite up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Mike, uh, believe it or not, we do have a pretty cool topic to discuss. We do. It's uh, quite exciting, actually. Yeah, I, I, I like this one. It was one of those that just kind of popped into my my little noggin well no my gigantic noggin my my little mind inside this gigantic cranium of mine um <laughs> there's a lot of space in there a lot of space a lot of a lot of weight that wants to you know tilt me toward one side or the other it's a struggle for my neck All- it's like a it's like a peanut in a whiskey barrel <laughs> sure <That's- laughs> I tell you, man, I have like the world's strongest <laughs> neck. I tell you that right now. Just, it's, a, it's a daily battle to hold this thing upward. Yeah. I'm telling you. Okay. I, it's a struggle to wake up in the morning. <laughs> he just rolls his barrel out. <laughs> well, I try to heave my, my torso over the side of the bed. Like my feet land first, my my head is still weighted down on the pillow, I, and I kind of start heave, heave. I start heave, you know, <laughs> you know kind of thrusting my shoulder. Let's see if I can get uh, some momentum going. And see, if finally, my my sloven like head <laughs> moves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But then once it gets going, it's there's no stopping it. <laughs> the momentum, I go flying out the door, man. Out the door, down the stairs, and out the front door. Jack is gone. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you. It's a struggle. Uh, anyway. Anyways, a topic. At yes, night. we have we do, we do have a good topic. <laughs> uh, we're talking haunted Alcatraz, Mike. and Alcatraz. You know, briefly uh, looking back at... Uh, just the innumerable amount of episodes that we've recorded going back into the Nonsense Cast Radio days, Ultimate Real Podcast days, and now the Paranomaly Zone days, we have never once discussed in detail, well, detail for us, the alleged hauntings of this infamous rock 
We're talking about the island. The Rock. Alcatraz. Yeah, not Dwayne Johnson. We're talking the not, island. No. Of Alcatraz. Um, man, what a history this place has. I'm pretty sure some of our favorite ghost investigative teams have visited Alcatraz. I'm pretty sure. Oh, ghost, absolutely. The ghost adventures team may have visited, visited there just recently as this last season. I'm not sure. Yeah. There's been probably, probably some of them that have, that have been on our show. Hey, maybe, maybe, yeah. I don't know if it was before or after, but I don't know. Um, yeah, it doesn't first matter. and foremost, Mike, what would you feel personally about wandering the halls of Alcatraz right now oh. as it is if we had the opportunity yeah. if you had the opportunity to do this by yourself no haunted tour type thing mm. no one telling you where you can or cannot go I mean yeah there's safety precautions of course but hey cautions to the wind when it comes to paranormal investigations for well no don't listen to us when we say that safety is first boys and girls safety is always first but Mike how would you well, feel wandering those halls it would be like a dream come true at, at mm. Alcatraz is something that I've known about since I was a little kid. It's another one of those those things that I grew up knowing about the the ghosts that are there and learning about uh, um, Al Capone when he stayed there. You know, very interesting um, place. There's a lot of a lot of history. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! And was it like even going back to your to the days of your Mike, when you were a child and you're interested in Alcatraz, were what was was it the haunted alleged haunted history that made you interested in it, or just oh just yeah, the idea yeah. that it was like such an isolated locale in the first place? The hauntings is what did it for me. That yeah. that sucked me right in. Yeah, yeah, I, I I don't blame you, man. And this is loaded. This place is loaded with some pretty downright creepy and frightening tales of. The paranormal, and we're going to get to a bunch of them here before we are done for the evening. One of the things that holy God, Toledo, dang it, dang what it. the hell you was know, that? I, I try to turn that dang thing down and I can't, All it right. just makes me mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there going we go. to Let's see if that works. All right, I'm gonna, I'll edit that. Don't make up. me mad. I you won't like me when I'm mad. Okay, Bill Bixby. <laughs> Rest in peace. God rest yep. his soul. All right, P. Bill. So I, I might edit that blaringly loud <laughs> noise that came through uh, before we yeah, before I publish my, it. That was the phone. Is it off now? It uh, as far as I know. Well, you thought it was before. Too, <laughs> so. Yeah, it's hard to say. The one thought that kind of rushed through my brain, Mike, when I was thinking about. You know, obviously Alcatraz in particular, but in general, haunted prisons. And there's there are a bunch of them out there. Oh, many, many. Probably every one of them. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and the reason I agree with you on that is because you just start thinking about the emotional tracks that are left there. Yeah. You know, just the the dread, the sadness, the anger, the violence. I mean, it's loaded with that energy, you know, not exactly and, positive energy by any means, you know? Yeah. Strong, strong energy. I mean, they, they go in there fired up. I mean, they're at a place where they do not want to be mm -hmm. that alone, you know, just the energy. It's uh, it's gonna, it's gonna have an effect. Yeah. Whether it, whether it, <clears throat> you know, is residual or maybe some intelligent hauntings are hanging out there. Um, mm -hmm. That's possibly, right. possibly both, but you definitely feel it. You definitely feel it as being a legit possibility, legit reasoning behind why these locales will be would be haunted. I mean, I get it. Um, I mean, even just that, you know, the tension, I th you know, that everyone feels there from security guards to the prisoners to, I mean, down the line, there's got that freaking daily, hourly tension, you know, um, mm. that has to leave some sort of mark too. I'd but. Who the hell knows, right? We're not experts. We just we just sit here and talk about this stuff. We theorize, or can yeah. we put, even put that word to it? I don't know if it um, if we reached the level of theorizing. Well, we we definitely share our opinions. So absolutely, I mean that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has an opinion, Mike. Just like they have their uh, how's the saying go <laughs> goes. 
Uh, opinions are like assholes. Everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyways, moving on. Mike's staring at me blankly. I know. I was, I was waiting for you to say like K Sera or something, no. but then he come up with a, some no, uh, uh-uh. some asshole thing. I don't. Well, I don't know. Well, if unless you're some sort of you know physical anomaly, you probably have an <laughs> you probably have an asshole. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I am a physical <laughs> anomaly, and I have an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got one. Like that's what I'm saying. So, see, you get it now, right? Everybody poops. Uh, isn't that a lyric to an REM song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody poops. <laughs> right. It's a great song. Oh, it is a great song. I, I, Mary and I listen to it often. We actually lay in bed, and I... Yeah. Put it on on the phone on YouTube and play it. Well, that's all. It, it's soothing. Very, very soothing. Very, very. Yes, soothing. it is. Does it include background flatulent noises? No, not so much. Well, it can. It can. Okay. It, 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 it's it's a distinct possibility. <laughs> Another thought that you know traversed its way through this this empty space in my head when it came to thinking about prisons and prisoners. You know, I'm not an expert on the conditions of Alcatraz, but there have been far too many prisons through, throughout the ages that have been abominations when it comes to providing even the basic care for, yes, the prisoners, yes, majority of them are not good people. A lot of them, if not most of them, should deserve to burn in hell. But I'm saying, also, they're still human beings at right. that moment. They're still alive. Do they truly deserve to be thrown in these absolutely unlivable, atrocious conditions? Mike, have you ever seen the movie Papillon? I have many, many years ago when I was I was just a kid, actually, and I loved it. Oh, it's a classic Steve McQueen yeah. movie from like the early yeah. 70s. Dustin Hoffman. Oh, classic Dustin Hoffman. He's, you know, and Steve McQueen's character, Papillon, obviously, you know, it's he's basically just trying to break free from every prison he's he's in throughout his existence. And he, according to the story, was was framed. But, you know, that's to neither here nor there. No, neither here nor there exactly. That's for the experts out there to decide their opinions on who's guilty and who is not, but the portrayed conditions of the prison on Devil's Island in that movie. I mean, that's a legit place. Legit history of just a, again, an abomination of human care, attempt at human care. It's there there's there's sent there basically to to die. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And it's it's one more reason added to my opinion. There you go again. Opinion that these emotions are so strong, so entrenched that they have to leave their mark in some paranormal residue of some sort in these locales. How many of these prisoners also died in these atrocious conditions? You know, um, I'm, again, I'm not necessarily saying that Alcatraz was on these same levels as a place like Devil's Island. But it wasn't good. It was not good. And again, I have to say, we're not sticking up for the damn prisoners. Most of them were awful people. I think you know what I'm saying, don't you, Mike? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's... If you're going to throw them in those, in those conditions, that's just pure torture. Just kill right, them. Well, just kill them. Well, solitaire, or solitaire, solitary, <laughs> not the card not game, the card game. but uh, sol- uh, solitary there. They It was like uh, just blocks that they put them in, you know, it's like A, B, C, or D, or whatever. Yeah, uh-huh. And they just shut the door, and it's it's just pure dark in there. They can't see anything. You know, they got a bucket in there somewhere that they have to try and find and and, and use for to, to shit in or pee in or whatever. Um, uh, not a bed or anything, you know, they just got to sleep on this floor. If they do have know. a bed, it's like a slab of, oh, you know, sure. Cement. Yeah. It's, and it's just, you know, horrible conditions. And actually I believe that they even used some of the old, uh, parts of the fort that used to be there in the 1800s. They would put the people in, in, uh, some of their, 
I think the strongholds for ammunition and things like that and hold them in places like that. It was just, it was horrible. So, I mean, you get, we're we're both, we're on the same wavelength wavelength here. We are. So let's get into some of the story behind Alcatraz, the alleged hauntings of, okay, we're going to spare you some of the details, you know, the technicalities and all that, all that shit. Yeah. It's starting to sound like a PBS uh, program. <laughs> I am sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> PBS, Patrick's Bullshit. Come yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and damn it, he's going to read again, I bet. Well, I have to read a little bit, so everyone's, yeah, everyone's okay. tuning out right now. You're the only one that has any thought about it. People don't care. Wow. Well, you I'm, know, they don't, and you sound fine. I think that I sound terrible. And then you tell me, oh, no, you've got this great radio voice. And but it's like, well, you but, do. You, but, you know, but I feel like I sound like a, a whiny snail or something that's got like mucus and that it can't really talk through. And, and it's just, you know, I did have a brain scan. My brain is fine, but. They did find a, a, an extremely large snail, impacted, uh, <laughs> a sinus cavity, I guess. Oh no, shit! Yeah, so you know, so I'm. Well, that explains the mucus. I'm saying, I'm just saying, you know. So, I thought you were going to say they discovered like a giant snail somewhere. No, 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 okay. no. But you're fine. You read fine. You articulate <sighs> definitely well. Well, I'm. Oh. Again, you're intelligent, you can read. Okay, now you're just making me blush. Now you stop. Okay, you stop. Right. <clears throat> if now, I went on, he'd get an erection. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say it hasn't happened already? <laughs> no, uh, edit that out too. Who nah, to? I'll, I'll anyway. Sa- I'll save that one. I'll save that one. No, yeah, I, I get easily <laughs> excited by my new Star Wars display behind me. So. Yes, it looks absolutely fantastic. And it, that new case is excellent. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Hopefully be adding to that sometime. It's difficult to add to those collections, man. It's, re- it's it, really yeah, difficult. It is. Now, of course, according to legend, Mike, Alcatraz Prison is not only one of the most uh, haunted places in the United States, but is considered by some as one of the most haunted places in the entire damn world, okay? Wow, that is saying a lot. Well, that's according to believers. That's that's for sure. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned earlier, Alcatraz, as we know it, as it, as it, I guess as it's best known for is for its incarceration of prisoners there in the uh, in the on the premises. Mike, did you know that Alcatraz, by the way, its technical definition or interpretation is either of pelican or Yes, strange bird. I did not know that. I always uh, heard the uh, like pelican. It meant pelican. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I I did not know that. I did not know that. It's weird, wild stuff. Obviously designed to incarcerate some of the nation's most dangerous uh, criminals, awful people. Alcatraz, its formidable formidable reputation, managed to break even. The spirits of some of its most notorious inmates. Mike mentioned a couple of them earlier today. We had like uh, Al Capone. I, I like how you said he stayed there like he was visiting. No, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was he was uh, locked up. He actually used to play violin in the shower. Oh, and then other people yeah. played violin on him in and, uh, the yeah, shower. He was, he was allowed to shower by himself because uh, otherwise people, you know, people were going to mess with him. And Take then him down. Yeah. they did allow him to to practice and play his violin. And actually, there are stories that if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of Al Capone's violin. I don't know how as I feel about that. As being played by Al Capone. I don't know how I feel about that. That would be... Yeah. I mean, we're, okay, we're talking about awful people. Right. Now, was he a good violinist? I have no idea, but... Um, Hmm. I don't know. I all I all I picture is Al Capone naked playing <laughs> this in the shower, you know, with like, his hat on, and, that, and that's it. Uh, yeah, and singing old solo mio, <laughs> you know, bring me a plate of pasta, you know. I now watch tonight. I'm gonna have a damn dream. You will, 
about Al Capone, and he's going to be pissed. And he's going to be trying to shove his violin some private areas, some of Mike's most personal orifices. <laughs> He'll make me choke on a cannoli. <laughs> that too. <clears throat> but yeah, not only Al Capone, also other uh, infamous inmates such as Arthur Doc Barker, George Machine Gun Kelly, yes, among others. And of course, their spirits are alleged to be among the those haunting these premises, Mike. Now, Alcatraz was constructed as a max, maximum security prison. Throughout the years, some were daring enough to break or attempt to break out. That's one list I'm going to find and read as well, Mike. I'm sorry. But it's a very, very brief one. But it's really interesting. I think it's important to the conversations about all the brutal murders that went down at Alcatraz, you know, yeah. There's a lot of nasty shanked. encounters. What was that? It shanked. <clears throat> is is that uh is that the proper prison term when you get taken out as shanked? I think so. They make a knife out of like a bed spring or something. <laughs> it's just it's crazy. Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh <clears throat> when I mentioned earlier about like the horrible conditions, it does mention that here in this, in this article, it's like in the nightmare, in this nightmarish isolation, inmates endured complete darkness, the absence of a sink, a bed devoid of a mattress and a solitary hole in the ground for their toilet. <laughs> Let's basically, we like nailed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even joking there. It's kind of cool. Um, it is surmised that these dire conditions left an indelible imprint on the souls of many inmates, rendering them unable to find peace even in death. So uh, I, I I have uh, I have heard that in C block or the this little hole that they put people in, if you sit in the corner, hunched down, you'll feel just this extreme cold and this emotion, um, and that is where you know, like the prisoners, they would huddle in the corner just you know frightened and damn so that and that energy is still there and people feel it um it's something that they talk about that's pretty darn cool yeah that's right i did send you a really good article on this earlier yeah. so i wonder if i should fly on over to that one but um mike don't let me forget please don't let me forget to talk about those, mur oh those, mur those murders that went down. I'm writing it down right now on my professional notes. Yeah. Murder. Underline murder. Red drum. <laughs> Red drum. <laughs> Red drum. Red drum. <laughs> um, you did mention some of those cells, but one cell in particular, Mike, cell 14D is the most infamous, allegedly okay. most infamous on, I keep on saying on, in <clears throat> Alcatraz. Well, I guess it works both ways. Um, Yet. That's sure. Now, if you ever have a chance, Mike, to visit Alcatraz, which would be awesome, but again, not on those damn tours, we have to check out cell 14D, mm -hmm. one of the most infamous spots. Uh, the chilling cell is associated with an unsettling legend that has intrigued countless visitors. The ghost, the ghost, the story goes on that an inmate met his untimely demise in that very cell. His screams of sheer terror resonating through the prison as he claimed a malevolent creature was about to claim him. Now, that's a guy who's in this cell. He's a prisoner. This isn't something that happened later on after this guy dies. This guy's alive and screaming, claiming that there's some malevolent entity that's trying to kill him. Right. In the 40s, they had a lot of uh, um, reports of seeing things and experiencing now, the paranormal. Of course, you wonder, you know, the prison settings can mess with your mind. I mean, you have to understand that. So was this, sure. was this guy just kind of losing it? You know, you have to throw out that skeptical argument. I don't want to be Mr. Poopy Pants skeptical guy here and stuff. <laughs> but, but it's, you know, <laughs> you have to wonder, was he simply... Poopy Pants. Yeah, yes, I said Poopy Pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, I found Mike's tickle button. I just have to say <laughs> Poopy Pants. <laughs> no, you, and you did it again, damn it. <laughs> Jeez. You can't say poopy butt or poopy pants, poopy and, pants and get it straight and tickle button <laughs> in in one episode. You cannot do it. That sounds like a sixties like pop duel, like Sonny and Cher. That's <laughs> yeah. poopy pants and tickle button. 
<laughs> they come out with great big daisy flowery hats and dresses and white go-go boots. <laughs> oh man, which one would be poopy pants? With because I'm envisioning like a a female and male uh, duo. You know, I'll say I'll say the male is poopy pants and the female yeah, is, is tickle. He, he's butter. got the brown polka dots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh, go Christ. ahead. Oh man. Okay. Oh my God. Go now, ahead. Numerous <clears throat> numerous visitors on these tours, Mike. Two Al- uh, yes. three Alcatraz have also reported an inexplicable drop in temperature within reach of this chamber you mentioned kind of similar aspects of okay. other well, chambers maybe, maybe this is the one that i've heard maybe about and maybe I just got the number wrong anyway, um, go ahead but yeah as if a lingering presence of tormented spirit tormented spirits still roamed those grim confines um that's another thing that i had written down on my professional notes here mike throughout mm-hmm. the years several several guards during their terms or during their terms of service their years of service, and also later on when they're recollecting some of their experiences, several security guards referred to an entity they called the thing. Simply mm-hmm. the thing. All it was described as was a large mass, don't giggle, large mass with glowing eyes. Hmm. The thing. Well, as long as it didn't have uh, have one eye. Like a large mass with one eye. Talk about poopy pants, man. Poopy. Poopy. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing a floating apparition of poop? No, oh, that'd be geez. something. I tell you, they don't call us professional podcast hosts for nothing, boys and girls. Mr. Hanky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't need a sound bar for this episode. This is just great. Uh, Mike, this is what you mentioned earlier. Uh, experiences not only C cell blocks, but also A and B cell blocks. There you go. Uh, many visitors have attested to hearing unnerving sounds of a moaning, crying emanating from these blocks where some of the prisoners, some of the prison's most notorious inmates were also confined. Now, again, the moaning and the crying, that just makes you think that these are just tormented individuals who are beyond misery being locked up in this Right, even this you know account. people that people that are have are so uh, like innately evil and doing whatever you know and and killing and uh, whatever crimes they committed and thinking oh, oh look at me I'm I'm the big man you know and then they are reduced to nothing to nothing yep you know absolutely not just a quivering pile of flesh you know just mike you know yeah. not to get deep in the philosophical here and and very okay. very briefly very very briefly i'm sincerely curious do you truly believe that someone is innately bad he does horrible things he sent to prison yes do you believe they can quote unquote convert and become a good person absolutely everybody has a chance everybody deserves a second chance they just need to find the jesus and they'll be fine okay i thought you were serious for a second then you said the jesus but i am i was serious about the whole thing so you were serious you know, but then to, okay okay i got you yeah I got you on that. but you know hey if they find the jesus and that's what helps them that's you know see for absolutely me absolutely fantastic I just, and I hope we don't lose listeners here, but I mean, I would love to think that everyone has a capability of changing, becoming, but sometimes I think that they're just born evil and they stay evil. And if they, well, then, if yeah. they change or convert, it's just because they're trying to save their ass, you know? And yeah, that's very possible. They fear death. They fear what is beyond that. And then they're like, oh gosh, I better act like I'm a good guy here. I'm going to yeah. find the Jesus, like you said, not mocking Christianity right. by any means. We know the yeah, absolutely. listeners know that, but to me, it's hard for me to to accept it. But you know, I'm not saying that hasn't happened thousands of times throughout throughout right. history. Hell, Darth Vader, Mike, he slaughtered little kids, and he was returned to the light side. So there you go. Yeah. I, I guess that's possible, right? According to yeah. George Lucas, it is. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> well, speaking of God, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. You got the Lucas scare, yeah. Now, among some of the other eerie tales associated with uh, A, B, and C cell blocks, Mike, 
is the alleged presence of the Alcatraz ghost known as the Butcher. Legend has it that the Butcher met a gruesome end within the very walls of Alcatraz in the 1940s. So I wonder what the hell the Butcher, how he earned his nickname. Was that prior to his incarceration or during his incarceration? But either way, this spirit supposedly lurks within the confines of Alcatraz. Kind of creepy. Mm. Some of the darker layers of Alcatraz's alleged haunting might actually extend beyond the chilling confines. Yes, I read that part there. The chilling confines. The island itself supposedly carries a haunted history rooted in alleged, I say alleged a lot. I have to. I throw that in there a lot. Rooting in the alleged curses of Native American tribes who believed the island was a place full of malevolent spirits. They warned their people against visiting the island lest they eventually be plagued by supernatural disturbances. Now, you and I were talking about that before we started recording. That was something that you were right. fairly, you were fairly, um, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? Familiar with those alleged stories there were. They, it's not like, this is, um, gosh, how do I want to word this? They don't want to go there. I'll just say it that way. <laughs> the Native right. Americans, they said that is a haunted rock. It's a cursed rock. Yep. It's not they something stay, like when you read like the headlines, clear. when you read headlines, they can be kind of misleading. You know, it's like the Native American curse. It's like, what? what? You're saying Native Americans threw a curse on the island? No, 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 no. They felt strongly that it already, already was cursed and they avoided it at all costs. Yeah. Correct? Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Again, you Michael, have chosen wisely. Michael, with the wonderful feedback, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the island's enigmatic lighthouse, Mike, adds another layer of eerie tales. The lighthouse's first keeper, Mr. James A. King, was found dead under mysterious circumstances, and some believe his spirit still lingers in that damn lighthouse, causing strange noises and unexplained events around the the area now lighthouses themselves are cool as hell but they can be creepy yeah. as hell they are awesome um like oh, the lighthouse on on the north shore in uh duluth oh i love that place split, you know, rock, split rock split rock yeah um, awesome awesome uh tour to go through that let's see here mike i am trying to find my personal tickle button all right, and my tickle button has yet to be found, so I will continue to move forward. Yes, uh, quit doing that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Talk about wasting precious time, right? Where's that damn tickle button? But we did mention earlier, Mike, obviously we talked briefly about how the Native Americans uh, believed, or I should say Native Americans believed that the island to be inhabited by evil spirits. And that's an interesting thing that I want to kind of talk about very, very briefly. So let's say that that island itself there was something about the island mm -hmm. that was creating, it was like a welcome, like a welcome mat or a welcome home type invitation to malevolent evil spirits. Is that something you think is a possibility or is it something, is it one of those hot spots for whatever reason is just, you know, kind of generating its own negative energy? I mean, what are your thoughts? Right. Like? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that could happen where it, it's generating its own energy that attracts these things. But um, is it attracting spirits or is it attracting and creating like elemental spirits yeah. and things of nature and uh, the like the Wendigo possibly? Oh, good Lord. Well, that might explain the entity where they described it. The guards described it as this black mass with, with kind of what right. they interpreted as eyes kind of. You right. know, who knows what it was? It could be some sort of, like you said, like, like an elemental inhabiting those cells. Because to, mm. to it, it wasn't within those cells. It was still just wandering this land. You know, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's occupying this the prison cells. You know, it's like this prison was built on top of its land already. You know what I mean? It's place. Right. And it's like, you guys, since you're not leaving, I'm haunting your asses. You know what I'm saying? Maybe for eons, that island has been uh, uh, like a penitentiary for spirits, for bad spirits. or I love that or, idea. Or, or bad elemental spirits. That is and, such a trippy <clears throat> idea, Mike. I love that. And it just continues on 
as a prison or continued on as a prison in our incarnation of it. Think about that for a second. I mean, us in our human existence, we have these physical incarnation or our incarcerations that we send the bad people to, right? Does the same thing pertain to the spirit realm? Is there a place where they the, the bad spirits are banished? That's I, I love that idea. I don't know. That really struck me as really cool, Mike. I like that idea. I hit your tickle button. You talk about hitting my tickle button. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be laughing, giggling all night thinking about that. Yeah, one. well, I'll be washing my hands all night. <laughs> Folks, you should see where his tickle button is. <laughs> uh, moving onward. Um, I do like that idea, though. Yeah, yeah. But it was even, you know, wrapping up the idea about this island being this malevolent force itself, the mass, the rock itself. Um, it is said that Indians were sometimes, you know, some of the, as a form of punishment, some violators of tribal Indian law were isolated on the island or banished for life to live, get this quote, among the evil spirits. Wow. So that's, that's, that kind of blows my mind a little bit. It's like you that would are, drive you crazy. Yeah. That, what do you Ooh. eat? <laughs> That's the last thing I would worry about. But hey. I mean, for crying out loud, I mean, you have to Yule Gibbons a tree and eat the bark or what? <laughs> I That's just crazy. I mean, those spirits and, are just some that are set to continue to lurk in the in the shadows, Mike, on this uh, on this island. I mean, right. And then the native people that are banished to there, they're adding to that energy. Yeah. I mean, it just it just continues on. It's it's a cycle, an absolute cycle it's that does very end. much a cycle. Again, more examples: the sounds of men's voices, uh, screams, whistles, um, the clanging of metal doors. Very very common, um, haunting example, I should say. Well, not a haunting example. An example of paranormal activity within prison walls is the clanging of metal doors. You know, you, uh, apparently it has heard right. quite often, and understandably so. Like the heavy jail door yes. being slammed shut. Yeah, something that's something that's gonna that's not gonna occur just naturally. We're talking right. about, like you said, these heavy. You have to manipulate them. You have to physically right. open and close them. The sound of keys jingling. Yes, absolutely. Um. More and more terrifying screams said to be heard. I mean, the, the examples uh, go on and on. Uh, the island served, as we have talked about briefly, as a federal penitentiary. And as such, several guards reported extraordinary experiences. I mentioned some of them earlier, so I'm repeating myself a little bit. But some that I didn't mention was the sounds of sobbing and moaning. But this, the terrible smells, Mike. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, what? Is it totally paranormal in... In nature that they're smelling, or is it just the nasty sewer buildup from <laughs> angry prisoners? Uh, who the hell knows? Um, mm. I'm going to go with the paranormal aspect because. Oh, absolutely. I mean, smell is another sense that is uh, that is used in paranormal investigations, and it, it does ha it does happen. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that. <laughs> uh, this is a, this is something that we mentioned that's very very similar in nature. Uh, when we talk about the haunting of Ted Bundy, a prisoner or a, a security guard who worked there, he claimed to have like seen the spirit of Ted Bundy like immediately after right. his execution. Um, very similar uh, uh, alleged accounts here, Mike, where... Chris Jericho really liked that episode. I thought you were going to say there was phantom sightings of Chris Jericho. <laughs> 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 um, no, other reports, Mike, from guards, security <clears throat> guards who worked there, alleged to have seen phantom prisoners and soldiers appearing before not only the guards, but also the guards' families who lived on the island with them. So um, that's not only the guards who were, you know, enduring these conditions, but they're taking them home because they lived there on the island. The families come, they either visit them or they stay with them permanently on the island as well. The family members claim to have seen phantom ghost prisoners, Mike. Uh, mm. If you were a family member there, you'd say, see you later, wouldn't you? Or would you stick it out? <laughs> oh, know. well, I'd obviously stick it out. That's I, I, been proven I, that I, I, I know, I know, I know. That that's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, it is alleged, Mike. Man, if I had a quarter for every time I've said alleged in this episode, I'd have about 10 quarters. <laughs> well, then you can go and get yourself a pizza. <laughs> a Totino's, baby. Yeah. Are those about two and a half bucks still? I don't know. Probably not. Party pizza. They're actually pretty darn good. Man, I tell you what, the, and I'm talking from past experience, boys and girls. Nothing tastes better than a Totina's pizza after a night out on the town and you come home. Yep. yep. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to turn on the oven. I got to eat some healthy Make shit. sure the crust is crispy and the cheese is melted all the way. I don't want anything frozen in the middle. Well, the it. thing is, there's nothing in the middle of the freeze because that's the, that pizza is like infamous for like having gigantic air pockets in it. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. a thin layer of cheese on like yeah. a, a wafer thin uh, yeah. crust. A wafer thin crust. Now, Mike, even Alcatraz, <laughs> the warden of Alcatraz, Mr. Warden Johnston. Warden Johnston. Now, Warden Johnston did not believe in ghosts, Mike, but he allegedly could. God, there's 11 quarters. He supposedly encountered an unmistakable sound of a woman sobbing while leading yeah. several guests on a tour of the prison. So, right. hmm, these cries heard by the warden and the guests were described as coming from inside the walls of the dungeon. And just as those sobs, wow. just as those sobs stopped, Mike, it was reported that an icy cold wind then blew through the group. Sure. No. Oh. They made contact there. Now, since the 1940s, apparitions have been seen at the site of the now burned out shell of the warden's house. It is said that during a Christmas party at Warden Johnson's, several guards, Mike, told the story of a ghostly man who suddenly appeared before them wearing a gray suit, a brimmed cap, and sporting mutton chop sideburns. It was Quint. Ah, Quint was there. What the hell? Quint. <laughs> Now, as the startled <laughs> guards stared at the apparition, the, the room again suddenly turned, guess what, very cold, and the fire in the Ben Franklin stove was extinguished. Less than a minute later, the apparition vanished, Mike. Now, I have to ask, what exactly mm. is a Ben Franklin stove? Do you know? I think, I think it's a little pot belly stove. He actually invented that. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> okay. I believe, yes. And you're probably right. Probably right. Because I will <laughs> say, and this is in all sincerity, Mike, I've mentioned this several times, you blow my mind on how <laughs> well, well, how talented you are when it comes to like just knowing what shit is. I mean, we could be Mary. wandering through, like we were at yeah. that abandoned church, we could be wandering through you know, any locale in Tagus, and we come across some rusted ornament of some sort i have no idea what the hell it is and mike's like oh that's a such and such that was used for this and that and it was made in 1942 handmade and in, in fact i'm very very impressed <laughs> right that that english hay fork that <laughs> yes. i have from it's it's from the 1800s it's, it's hand forged i hate hand forged yep i blew that one i yes. wanted to say hand forged but i said handmade i'm sorry well it, you know same thing uh, we mentioned this earlier about the lighthouse, but I'll kind of re repeat this. It has been reported that the old lighthouse will suddenly appear on foggy nights. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, this place shouldn't be running. This lighthouse should not be running. And all of a sudden, it's like, hello, I'm here. I'm working. And not only does it suddenly appear on these foggy nights, but is also accompanied by eerie whistling sounds and a flashing green light that makes and the way. sound of eating potato chips with your mouth open mm, is over heard over a loudspeaker frequently yes a lot and often and frustratingly so <laughs> it's aggravating well along with this eerie whistling sound also this yes. flashing green light that makes its way slowly around the entire island mm. well Eita. sounds like a probe of some sort Hmm, a giant alien probe. Hmm, yeah. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I honestly have no idea why I said that. <laughs> Every time I hear the word probe, my mind immediately goes to aliens. Why, yeah. why oh, is that? Of course, yeah. That sounds, like, <clears throat> that sounds like something we should have talked about on our clusterfuck of an episode from a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Giant alien probes. I'm sure we well, won't get that wrong. Well, you know, E.T. had that great big long index. Okay, hey, that hey, had, hey, that hey, light on, hey talk light about on it. That'd be very easy to find anyone's tickle button with that finger. <laughs> colonoscopy coming up. <laughs> Did you say a colonoscopy? <laughs> yeah, I, I know I said it wrong. No, that's fine. I know what you bet, but hey. It's... <laughs> ah, okay. Now, when the prison was still opened... We're talking about Alcatraz, obviously. Other guards told of hearing phantom cannon and gunshots. Right. Uh, these gunshots were then accompanied by screams that were so real. Again, this according to the guards themselves. These screams were so flipping real that the seasoned guards were actually sent to the ground believing the prisoners had somehow escaped and obtained weapons. They were reacting to these phantom gunshots, these phantom cannon blasts, as if they actually happened. That's how legit, that's how real they thought they were. I mean, how Great. freaking loud and clear. Uh, I, you know, I, I just feel excitement hearing about that because I would, I would so love to be in that exact same oh. situation. You know, and, and, you know, these things like the cannons and the, the man in the gray suit and the mutton chops. They obviously go back to the 1800s when there is a fort there and used as a fort. And uh, they did hold, hold prisoners there. Right. And, you know, and they, they must have defended it against something, you know, with the cannon fire and the fighting. And That's so, one thing uh, that always blows my mind. I think it's so cool. And, you know, there's several examples of it. Like you hear like the, the phantom cannon blasts at like, you know, infamous civil war sites, you know, battlegrounds, yeah. you know, that stuff absolutely is mind blowing yep. to me. Just that residual energy that's there. Oh yeah. It's a, a pure bucket list for me, a very high up on my bucket list. It would be to explore the mm -hmm. uh, battlefields in the South, mm -hmm. you know, the, like Gettysburg and things like that. Uh, oh gosh. Or just like, to you know, feel the energy. Those several reported sightings of the, and we're not going to get up on, on a tangent here, but those several reported sightings of those phantom soldiers at Gettysburg, Mike, you know, marching slowly along, right. you know, like you see them on and the tree And they have great line. video. Oh, gosh, some of that stuff you know, is fantastic. Yeah. Um, go search it on YouTube or anywhere. That stuff is so good. Um, it just makes you wonder, is there any sort of intelligence behind those apparitions, Mike? Or is that purely, here's that word again, is that purely a residual... <laughs> residual visual you know is it yeah, something that's just go. playing on that loop constantly or is there any sort of intelligence to that if there is intelligence to those phantoms walking through the woods or out on the tree line there the wood line right that makes it to me that makes it very very sad that Absolutely. they're just so reliving it yeah yeah you know the residual that obviously doesn't have any intelligence that would know you know it, 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 that would be so awesome to see Oh, you know, uh, but to to uh, to encounter a, an intelligent spirit, and uh, and and you know, it, you would feel that sad energy. You know, you would. Oh, feel you would that, have to. You would have to. You know, uh, yeah, because it it would have to be horrible. If you uh, have if to, you have empathy in the slightest degree, you would feel it, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You'd you'd feel it just walking around there, even without encountering, you know, an apparition. Oh, Mike, that's just being again, there. We have to make another road trip. I mean, we have so many planned. You know, <laughs> I don't want to sound morbid, but man, time's running out. We need to get to these damn places, you know? I'm not getting any younger. Yeah, no one is, unfortunately, right? My now, birthday's coming up. I'm going to be 61 I years know, old. I know. I uh, know. An early happy birthday to you, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other and, I, often, and I still wear jeans and t-shirts. I know. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Nothing anyway, wrong yeah. With that. I'm wearing my Duff beer t-shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, among other often reported experiences from the guards themselves, Mike, was the smell of smoke. The reported smell of smoke that often came from a deserted laundry room as if the laundry was on fire. Hmm. And when the guards went to investigate, the black smoke was so thick, it drove the guards from the room. However, just minutes after that, the room was completely smoke-free. So like a phantom smoke. Yeah, that's, 
That's pretty interesting. Um, you know, like how they smell how, it. Uh, they smell it. The smell is so strong. They go to investigate it. It's there. They see it, and then it vanishes. Yeah, that that's like experiencing, you know, a smell. You know, like uh, that's like your common. If you smell perfume and it mm. goes away as quick as you smell it, but you know, the energy that it takes would for that would be, oh. you know, huge. But, you know, for this to happen with the smoke and to, to smell it and see it. To see it, exactly. You know, to see it and experience it, that real, Damn. you know, the energy that it takes for that would be phenomenal. And, you know, you have to think, what are the spirits on that island or in the walls of the buildings that are left? Mm. You know, it, it's there's something beyond the forces of what, what we, what we think. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Uh, we mentioned some of the cell blocks earlier. Another notorious D block of, of the prison is said to have been and continues to be one of the most haunted block in the prison. Mike, uh, while first built the same as the other cell blocks, the Bureau of Prisons appropriated additional money for a more secure D block. After the 1939 escape attempt in which Arthur Doc Barker was killed. That was right. one of the murders we were talking about earlier, among several brutal murders from guards to prisoners. Shanked. And shanked to vice versa, you know, vice versa. Um, yeah, a lot of nasty stuff went down. D Block, which became known as the quote treatment unit, uh, comprised of 42 cells with varying degrees of restrictions. For all prisoners incarcerated in D Block, no contact with the general population. None whatsoever. 36 of these cells were virtually like the others in the general population. However, inmates were not allowed to work nor go to the mess hall for meals. They were allowed only one visit to the recreation yard and two showers each week. And all meals were served in the cells. Their only diversion was reading of prison-approved material. These cells all faced the Golden Gate Bridge, from which the fierce cold, wind, cold winds often blew. I read this earlier today, Mike, too, how that was kind of an extra added punishment for the prisoners. It was. Being yeah. able to see yep. the city. Free, freedom is that close. Freedom is and, right there. And there is absolutely no way you're going to get there. No way you're going to see like these these fancy schmancy cruisers going by, yep. you know, ships just sailing yep. by filled with tourists. Yeah, it would be difficult. Being um, able to that, hear them on the like the bow of yeah, the ship going, yep. hey, losers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it would be torture. Lots of yeah. I'm I'm going through some of the details of some of the uh, atrocious um conditions here. <laughs> Uh, five of the remaining six cells in D-Block were known as strip cells, but were more often referred to as simply the hole. This was reserved for the most severe offenders of prison rules. These cells were located at the bottom tier, the coldest place in the, in the prison, and contained only a sink, a toilet, low wattage light bulb, and the guards could turn that one off whenever they felt like it. So, if, yeah, we don't put you in the dark right now. See you later. And the prisoners' mattresses were taken away during the day, they are not allowed at any time in the yard or showers or given reading materials. Inmates could be sentenced to as many as 19 days in the hole, completely isolated in a state of constant darkness and boredom. Boy, you could do some meditation and get just get oh, zen out. I would hope someone think about that. Oh, that's now, horrible. Now, the last strip cell, Mike, known as the Oriental, was the most severe punishment that the prison could assign. Assuring complete deprivation of all peripheral senses, the dark steel encased cell contained no sink, no toilet, just a small hole in the floor for the prisoner's waist. Inmates mm. were placed naked in the cell, given a restricted diet, confined in a pitch black cold Environment. Although a sleeping mattress was allowed at night, it was removed at dawn each morning. The only, uh, I guess, I don't know what the word is. The only good part of this, Mike, is that they were 
These inmates were usually only subject to this degree of punishment for a mere two days. So not uh, so not the 19 that we're talking about. But uh, I wonder what they were fed, you know, like this restricted food. You yeah, said. It, it, that's what I'm curious about. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably like what? Just just uh, no solid food whatsoever. Just like probably, yeah, some probably soup. like soup mashed potatoes without gravy or something or Shit, they, or, they, or a steak that's not salted enough you know okay things like that okay mr mr uh i want my life to be perfect as a prisoner no <laughs> no i'm really I'm, bread and water I bet. yeah exactly yeah yeah like some, you know and the, if they got bread it was better it was more than day old i'm sure now one former guard mike here we're getting to some getting back to some of the paranormal stuff but i thought it was kind of nece- uh, necessary to share some of those conditions um one former guard who worked at the prison in the 1940s, he actually reported that guards often saw the ghostly presence of a man in the late 1800s prison, in late 1800s prison attire, walking the hallway mm-hmm. next to these very strip cells we were talking about. Now, on one occasion, when an inmate was locked in the hole, he immediately began to scream that someone with glowing eyes was in the cell with him. Ufta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no kidding. The 19th century spectral prisoner had become so much of a practical joke among the guards that the convict's cries of being attacked were ignored. The inmate's screams continued well into the night when they were suddenly replaced by total silence. When the guards inspected the cell the following morning, morning the convict was found dead with a terrible expression on his face and noticeable, get this, handprints around his throat what the autopsy well, revealed he... the autopsy revealed that the strangulation was not self-inflicted well think about it mm-hmm. <clears throat> now if you wanted to do it you could get it done but sure how flipping damn near impossible would it be to strangle yourself with your own hands yeah yeah i it's i think that's impossible your instinct would be to stop it just would yeah well, you know, you hear people cutting their own throats as a way of suicide. But to strangle yourself? Yeah. I get cutting the throat. I mean, it's not like I'm so, oh, I understand that. No, I'm talking about how that just seems damn near impossible to me. Yeah, yeah. It was said at the time, Mike, uh, about this very particular uh, prisoner with these handprints found on him. It was said at the time that many other prisoners believed the inmate was strangled by a guard who had simply mm-hmm. finally had enough of the inmate's screaming though an investigation was made no one ever admitted to the strangling well why would they most believe that the prisoner was killed by the restless evil spirit of the 19th century prisoner who was often seen wandering the corridors a murderous ghost oh god yeah what do you think about that mike do you do you buy into that story well i think it was officer doofus from the back of the crowd (laughs) i did it that's right. I apologize. I did it. I apologize, Officer Doofus. How long you been <laughs> on? I'm uh, been on on service tonight, young man. Uh, <laughs> how many hours in a day? Oh man, <laughs> I I honestly don't know how I feel about that story. Do I think it's impossible? No. Um, what do you think about a murderous? ghost mike that's well, wandering the halls and literally haunting prisoners so much so that they actually have physically attack them to the point of death. yeah and you know it's it's like like we've said before people are as they were in life you know you get a, a, a right right somebody that's a murderous you know serial killer or whatever you know and it's this spirit wants to do the same thing and has the energy to do it. That's key thing right there. And being at Alcatraz where it's like a huge battery, you know, that's where they get the strength to do this. Stuff. God dang it. You're on a roll tonight, Mike. I love that idea too. calling yeah. uh, the rock is like a huge battery. Yeah. Like a paranormal battery. Absolutely. Uh, co-author of the book haunted Alcatraz, Michael Curie also a described uh, also had described receiving psychic impressions when he visited cell 14D. Uh, Mr. Curry described experiencing tingling sensations. Well, that could be any number of things, Mr. Psychic. Uh, no, he, no, he was having a stroke. <laughs> He's not psychic. He had psychic feelings, I should say. 
Uh, he also described allegedly, oh, there's 12 quarters, seeing a small man with his head shaved who told of being beaten, his legs broken by guards, and left in solitary confinement. He's saying, see, I'm, re- I'm saying that in quotation marks. He saw this, he envisioned this in his head, being spoken to by a small shaven head, I guess maybe prisoner, who said he had been beaten to death by it's the It's a guards. little, sh- it's a tiny bald man. It's Moby. What's Moby doing in Alcohol? Yeah, there you go. It's a wee bitch of a man with no hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on another occasion, renowned ghost hunter Richard Sennett and a psychic spent the night in Alcatraz. Sennett locked himself in cell 12D, Oof-ta. where an evil spirit is said to make his home as the steel door was closed. Mike, the ghost hunter felt icy fingers wrap around his neck. Absolutely. While the experienced psychic visions of the bodies of... Let me reread that. While... Experiencing psychic visions of the bodies of twisted and dismembered men. Mm. Lord. Now, are they seeing, again, air quotes, seeing some of the hidden history of the shenanigans that went down at Alcatraz, Mike? Well, that's that's an interesting thought and, and very possible. We're talking like who knows? guard brutality, maybe. Absolutely. I mean, and, and why not? I mean, this place was, you know, people died there probably every day. You know, what's another one in the in cold storage? And unfortunately, you know? it's another, it's, it's a probably far too common occurrence, Mike, where prisoners yeah. suffered death at the hands of those who are allegedly, 13, those whose job is to protect them, security. Exactly, them. yeah. And, you know, that's, I'm sure that was done more commonly back then. Oh, hell yeah. You know, and... I believe that it is done still today. There are names you can pop out of, of people that have mysteriously hung themselves in right. prison or oh god, you know it. Found you know, you know, and there's yeah, there's stuff and there's people walking around that know what happened. I, yeah, and you know, there are some pretty well known big names who shall go nameless who have yeah. political ties. We'll we'll just leave it at that. Who have met their demise within these walls uh who the hell knows what that truly happened um yeah we got a little ways to go here We're not a little ways uh just a few more minutes to go here mike um I'll try and fit in as much as i can in cell block c many believe that the utility passageway i think you might have mes- mentioned this earlier at least or maybe yes. when we were talking before we started recording yeah The utility passageway where convicts bernard coy joseph kretzer and marvin marvin hubbard they were right. killed during their escape attempt in 1946. They believe that this very passageway is haunted by the spirits of these three men who were killed. Loud, clanging noises are often heard, but stop when the door is opened. Only to, of course, resume again once the door is closed. I mean, why? I mean, those pesky damn spirits. Others have also reported seeing the apparitions of these men wearing their fatigues and hearing disembodied voices at the riot site that left the three prisoners dead that mm-hmm. is one of those things that we i don't know if, god i don't know if we're gonna have time to get to it but uh, i believe it is literally known as the battle of alcatraz mike the big yes absolutely the big occupation well kind of well i shouldn't say occupation guards were held prisoner basically the roles were reversed by the prisoners themselves mm-hmm. and shit went down uh, fatalities. All heard. because Larry didn't get his peaches at lunch. <laughs> Damn, Larry! Boy, it kicked off a hell of a rile. <laughs> anyway, now oh, we mentioned Al Capone earlier, and Mike did mention the strumming of his alleged. Well, actually, Mike, this one here said it was a phantom banjo that was strumming. Yes, you're banjo. right. Banjo. You're right. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> so I got the instrument wrong. I, I no, read it fine. when I was a kid. I read this when I was a kid. No, that's totally fine, man. And now totally I'm fine. an old man, so <laughs> it was a phantom trombone. Yeah. <laughs> Al Capone sat in the shower with his trombone and played it with his butthole. <laughs> <laughs> oh good God almighty. 
he toured the prisons back there in the 30s, you know. Do you remember the television <laughs> show Sightings? Do you remember that show? Oh, absolutely. I love that show. They yeah. they had a special back in the year, uh, back in the year, back in the day, uh, visiting Alcatraz. Um, yeah. And they had enlisted the hype of a, the hype, <laughs> well, maybe the hype, the hype and help of a psychic investigator, Peter James. Oh, yes. I know. I remember Peter James. Yeah. I was very impressed by him. Yeah, and he alleged 14 quarters. He supposedly, um, after sharing his impressions as he walked through the prison, he said that he described hearing the voices of men who had told him they had been driven mad and experienced, they had been driven mad by experiences of abuse, fear, and pain. So kind of along yes. the lines of what we've been talking about a lot here, this emotional residue from these, yes, a lot of them, most of them awful, terrible people, but they also suffered at the hands of others unnecessarily really i mean what good are they doing they're just kind of getting their jollies off torturing these people whether or not you think yeah, they believe they, or deserve it is a whole nother discussion well yeah they, they thought of these people that were incarcerated there as just human waste that you know it didn't matter that's exactly you know, it human they're waste. sent they're sent here basically to die you know it, it's it's like a last stop for them so now, i want that's so, that's well said mike I wanted to get back to um, the butcher because I had mentioned him earlier and I wasn't too familiar with uh, a little bit of the story, but he has mentioned here, and this will wrap it up. Um, it is said that the laundry room in Selva C is also said to hold an unseen presence. Now, when a CBS news team brought in celebrity, celebrity psychic Sylvia Brown, along with ex-convict Leon Thompson, Sylvia immediately encountered the unseen presence and strong impressions of violence in the laundry room. As Sylvia described, a tall man with a bald head and small, beady eyes. Oofta. Leon Thompson, the ex-convict, moved forward stating, I remember Butcher. He was a hitman with Murder Incorporated before they caught him. His name was A.B. Maldowitz. Mm. But we called him Butcher. Another prisoner killed him here, right here in the laundry room. Prison records confirmed that Maldowitz was indeed killed by another inmate in that exact laundry area on cell block C. So there you go. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that that validates some of the <clears throat> stuff that any of these psychics allege, but I believe, I believe in sensitivity. I believe in feeling the energies that are surrounding you to some degree. I absolutely believe in these visions. Um, I think we all have them in some form or, or another, even if it comes in just feelings, you know, we kind of like, I have a foreboding feeling. I'm not going to take a right here. I'm going to take a left. Yeah. And then you find out the next day that there was a car wreck down that road that you didn't take. You know? mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, do you have any final thoughts here? We kind of rushed through this, but I think this was a pretty cool discussion on uh, one of the most infamous haunted locations, 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 possibly in the world. Um, any final thoughts to wrap up our discussion on the haunting of Alcatraz? The haunting of Alcatraz. It's, it always has been haunted. It, it, it's been haunted since it rose out of the water as an Island. And I love that idea. And, Sorry, go ahead. And, and the it's it through its entire life has been nothing but negativity and haunting and it still goes on today in the wreckage of what's left. It's and it, and it will continue when we're all gone and the, the buildings are left, you know, to rubble. Do you think that they'll, that do you think still that, be there? Do you think that Alcatraz will ever you know, the, the prison itself will ever be demolished? I mean, it's it's a, it's I, it's a side thought, I know, but I want I be, want to be preserved. It, yeah, it should be, but it's it's probably just going to be neglected, and, and you know, except yeah. for the parts where you know you take the tour. Yeah, it's making like that, th that's the thing. You know, Demolishing it, they're, they're losing some financial income there. Right, they're making money off of it, absolutely, and people are being able to see, you know, for themselves, you know, this kind of place that 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 held these people and the violence that was there. I mean. Where else can you experience this, you know, something like that, you know, besides going to like Auschwitz or, 
you know, a concentration ooh, camp. Ooh. You know, that's that's another subject altogether. Another but subject altogether, man. That's one place that I would. I would be crying. I would, yeah, yeah. You know, I would be so emotional. Yeah, but now we anyway. Had, you had mentioned kind of, you know, the, the possibility of like the rock itself, the island itself being like a locale where like spirits may be banished, you know, the quote unquote bad spirits are sent that way. And I was like, I love that idea of like, you know, we, you know, obviously in this physical existence, we send the bad people away to prison. Where mm-hmm. do the good spirits send the bad spirits in their existence, in their realm? How about this idea, Mike, is that they are simply, they are in the spirit realm. And to punish them, they're sent back to the physical realm here. Sure. Do you think that that maybe is a possibility? We're going to send you back to that shitty-ass existence in, in the physical, whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to put you right here on the rock. I yeah. mean, is that maybe a possibility? Maybe I'm being silly, but uh, I don't know. No, that that's a good possibility. I like that theory. You know, um, it, you know, it just adds to the to the energy that's there. You know, if that's that's something that's true yeah um and the energy is always being built that battery is always being charged um you know there and there's so many places in the building or in the buildings or in the property that are haunted um it's like if that energy all combined into one spot you know it it would be like a an earth shattering revelation of of the paranormal, it would be like you know, Dan like Aykroyd, and Bill Murray, and <laughs> Harold Ramis, you know, stuff. Dogs and cats living together, yeah. mass hysteria. Yeah, he's Vigo, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Not my dog, Vigo. I know what you're talking about. Uh, but yeah, so the, it, there's just a lot of bad energy there. The little weird man in Ghostbusters Part Two. Yeah, I love that guy though. Yeah, <laughs> so, well, not his not accent. not Vigo. Vigo the Carpathian was right. he was the bad guy, but uh, Janish Janish was the little the, yeah Janish the art yeah, he, the museum director wherever he was there the artifact. Yeah, he had a thing for Sigourney Weaver though. <laughs> he sure did. Yeah, he must have watched Aliens and he liked it. Well, a lot of people did, Mike. Uh, yeah, a lot of people a lot, did. A lot of people did. Well, Mike, this has been a great discussion. Thanks for making it work, my friend. It has. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, publishing this one and getting some feedback from our awesome listeners. Um, yeah. Let us know what you guys think about Alcatraz. What do you, what do you think about uh, prisons in general as potential hotbeds for paranormal activity? We'd love to see you guys over at the Patreon page. If you listened this long, if you lasted this long, <laughs> um, no better way to support the podcast and check us out on Patreon. Lots of cool exclusive stuff over there that, you can't find anywhere else, and we're going to be adding more and more to it as time goes along, guaranteed. Mike, until next time, my friend, what do friends of the Paranomaly Zone podcast need to do? Peace out.